very excited today because the goal for today's video is to get that primary back on and get this thing together and make sure it doesn't leak. Hopefully you shall not leak. I'm just putting it out there, put it into the world. If there's any energy that says, you know, the gasket's not going to fail or it's going to fail or a seal's not going to fail or it's going to fail. Uh, I'm praying for it. But that said, I have the primary cover and uh, this gasket, which I'm thinking about it. I really don't need uh, for sealing so much. I mean, I suppose maybe this part. But most of it, since I'm doing the open chain, uh, I don't need it for sealing. I need it, I think, just to make up the space so that I can torque everything down. So what I'm going to do put a couple dabs of grease because that seal looks like it'll be a pain to get into place at a later point. Uh, so a couple dabs of grease over here. And I'll place the seal there. And with a little luck, the grease will hold it and while I put the primary on. So that is going to be step one. And uh, step two is cross your fingers. You know. So here's the primary. Fresh uh, bearing installed with green Loctite um, retaining compound. It's a 6205-2RS-C3 bearing is what uh, I ended up pressing in. And moment of truth. Oh, it's funny. I didn't take this apart all that long ago. And I, I know there was a struggle, but I don't 100% remember it. So we're gonna have to play with it and see if we can't figure it out. Originally, the primary bolts are safety wired together. Well, these two, the two that, that go to the engine are safety wired together. And then those two have a retaining tab with safety wire also. But I'm less concerned with those. Um, in the Genuine James kit, and I saw it as soon as I looked at it. I, I didn't even have to open it. I saw this through the plastic and I instantly knew. I said, this is awesome. This is going to go right here and act as that safety wire. So I can get rid of the washers, drop the bolts into this little uh, locking mechanism. I don't know what you'd call this. I, I don't know what it's called. Uh, I think, I think it's called awesome. I think it's called awesome that James Gaskets made that. And, uh, you know, I don't know if anyone else ever did, but if they didn't, they should. So I just run these in by hand. Yeah, look at that. I wonder if it's, I wonder if it has a direction where it gives a little bit more clearance to the stator. Not sure, but worth the time to just pop it off, flip it around and see. Uh, may, eh, yeah, maybe. So if you're using this, I would suggest doing a test fit like this. Just make sure that it clears the stator. But that's awesome. It's the fact that I can put that on, torque it down, bend the tabs like the newer ones. So newer models, uh, I don't know what year they switched to it, but definitely by 1996. Works the same. All right, we get to torquing. Five, 10, 15. On these inner primaries, the front bolt is, or I shouldn't say front bolt. 
The inner primary to engine case bolt is a 5 16 bolt with a half inch head and the transmission uh, to inner primary or inner primary to the transmission, however you want to say it, that's a 3 8 bolt with a 9 16 head. 13 millimeter and 14 millimeter will work in its place. But the fact that they're two different size bolts requires two different torque. Uh, as far as I can tell, Harley always likes to give you a range. I believe it's 15 to 18 for these and 20 to 24 for these. I am not into stripping aluminum. And because of that, I'm going to go on the lower side and say 15 for the inner primary two engine housing bolts. They feel pretty good. And you know what? They have retainers that I will bend into place. And these external ones, I can see if they loosen up and I can get to them. And I'm less worried. I guess Harley was less worried too, because there's no, uh, no way to retain them. No safety wires or, uh, you know, folding tabs or anything like that. So for the rear, we'll kick it up another five. Now we're at 20 and we'll do the inner primary to transmission bolts. Well, I just got on the ground, tightened up the two bolts underneath and the uh, starter bolts. Uh, yeah, I didn't record that because honestly, that was quite painful, um, you know, laying on the creeper and uh, still healing. So yeah, that was just a, that was just a struggle, but they're done, they're torqued. And now the, is this the jack shaft? I don't know, when I'm doing the later models where the solenoid and the starter are one, I'd consider this piece the, the jack shaft. So I'll go with that for this also. Um, this damn thing, it almost fell out when I was taking it apart. Will this thing fall into place? Oh, sometimes I'd rather be lucky than good, I say all the time. And this is one of those times where I'm hoping I'm lucky rather than good. Uh, I mean, I think so. I always find it funny, you know, when people say, oh, that's a good thing happened. You should play the lotto, or you should do this, or you should do that. And I don't know why, maybe it's just, you know, growing up, the television I was exposed to or whatever. But I remember, well, let's start with It's Married With Children, which is one of my favorite episode, uh, series. And there was an episode where everything was going right for Al, but he wouldn't admit it. He says, nope, no, things are still screwed up. Nothing's going right. You know, things are going good at work, at home. And then he started with this uh, card game, gambling, and he's winning, you know, these uh, mob guys cars and all this other stuff. And he's like, nope, not admitting it, not admitting it. Well, he finally does. He says, you know, maybe I am. Maybe I'm a winner. And at that moment, the door is broken down by law enforcement and he's arrested because those are now his cars that he won and all that. Um, I don't know. I always think of when things go good, uh, not so much what other thing you can do, but all right, where's the downside? What's going to go wrong? So far, I hope the going wrong stuff is in the past on this because the reassembly is going pretty good, and I know where that Woodruff key is. Woodruff key and the clutch lever. Uh, I'm not sure what this is exactly called, but it goes in here, and it's the last thing that touches the actual clutch hub and pressure plate and releases the clutch. So, very important. And I'm going to grab the primary hub, compensator, and chain, and adjuster, and put it on. First, 
I did change the clutch hub bearing. So I will show you that process now. You know, I questioned this, uh, the play on this bearing. I'm not certain if it's a C3 bearing. This is the replacement that I, I ordered, um, which would be an extra clearance. And is that causing it or is the bearing worn out? So we're not going to take a chance. We're just going to press these bear this bearing out. Basically, we separate the hub, then push the bearing out, pop the new one in, new retaining clips, which this one's not so bad. This is a pain in the ass. This is, uh, be ready to fight with a little strength and some picks or screwdrivers or something because this has got a lot of tension behind it. So we'll get this pressed apart. This is going to either go exceptionally well or completely horrible. <sighs> we find out right now. Oh, here it goes. There's the hub coming out. Oh, piece of cake. How about it a bearing? I right, got the old bearing out. Look like the right bearings. Should be. This is uh, Eastern Parts Clutch Hub Assembly Bearing, five speed big twin, 84 to 89. So there's a little bit of play in this one and uh, oof, a lot of uh, not good smells, I guess. Through the years, the oil, you know, maybe clutches, who knows what he, uh, what the original owner went through, but uh, it doesn't feel bad. You know, like they said in Casino when they were discussing Andy Stone, good guy, good bearing. But why take a chance? Let's put a new bearing in there. And the inner C-clip is much easier as far as tension. Just uh, have a habit to fly away if you miss. But that's it. Clutch hub assembled. New bearing. Aha, nice, clean, with a fresh bearing in the clutch hub. Uh, let's see. The hole is to the top. Well, the not hole, the... Uh, cut out for the woodruff key so see if we can't get that to line up that's something difficult sometimes right because it's likely moving or maybe not <laughs> hey oh what a great feeling what a great feeling. I know, I'm going to Loctite both of these. I just wanted to spin that on a couple of threads because my luck, I'll turn around and all this will fall off and be on the ground. <laughs> all right, let me get some Loctite. I've watched a few videos on this now and I realized that the way I took it apart, not everybody's favorite way. Uh, I see many people taking these bolts out. I don't know. I went for the first one that took the whole thing. You know, you have to do what works for you too. You can't, it's not just about what the proper procedure is. I mean, man, meaning somebody at the factory created that procedure. And, you know, to err is human, right? Man makes mistakes. Sometimes you find a better way. I'm not saying that's a better way, but it's my way. It's funny because I remember being young and working on cars, you know, well, back then this was, these were your daily drivers, but you know, you wanted a race car or sheesh, what I, what I thought was a race car. That's hilarious onto itself. In fact that, uh, I thought I had a race car that probably back then, uh, I don't know, I'm going to say, I'm going to say maybe ran 14s. Um, but I remember a lot of times working on stuff and I was always into 
Camaros and Firebirds and, and you know, Corvettes, whatever. Um, when they got into the tune port era of cars, there was a lot of brackets that, like, like the alternator would be in and there'd be a bracket that goes from the alternator like around to an exhaust manifold or something like that. Uh, I'm sure there may have been stuff like that earlier on in older cars, but I had no experience with it. My experience comes from the tune port uh, F bodies. And I remember, you know, getting rid of all these things. Like something like this, I would have never put this back on. Are you kidding? But then you get older, I guess, or... You get more experience, which makes you wiser. Um, and you learn that someone engineered that for a reason. So the few minutes it takes to put it back on, or in the case of, you know, the race cars or the race cars that we thought we had, the extra ounce isn't gonna matter. But that's my tale of life experience through cars. Chain back on, transmission in fifth gear. And now, should be able to torque that down, torque this down, and then put the clutch's pressure plate together with oh, that much closer to throwing the cover on, some oil, and seeing what happens. Little bit of red Loctite. This is I think one of the areas where I don't uh, worry too much about Loctite. I just know how much vibrations and the pulsing, the compensator, everything that goes on over here and uh, have no qualms about dealing with Loctite to remove it in the long run. I think that's a better situation than the, the nut or bolt or whatever in this particular area removing itself so we'll get this on let's see i'm using this as uh, crude as it might seem through here and this should lock everything up enough to give it 75 foot pounds of torque so let's snug this down All right, here we are. Now, let's see. I'm gonna try throwing the clutch together and seeing if that will hold enough for me to tighten the compensator. It doesn't always. On the fat boy, the clutch slips. So if it does, I'll address it, but I'll give that a try since the clutch has to go back together anyway, right? First, we'll put this in place. And then the clutch. So I'm gonna take one last look at these. I mean, I'm pretty confident that they're fine, but let's see, we got one, one, two, three, four, five, six discs. All right. Yeah, they all, they're all comparable with each other. I like it, I'm gonna go with it. So let's see, steel. Friction. This is exactly the way they came out too. Just, I don't know if that matters. Some people might say it does, some people might say it doesn't. But this is the order they came out with, they came out of the clutch in. So this is the order they're going back in. And then we can nice and easy get the pressure plate back on. See if this thing's gonna hold. So that's six clutches and seven steels. They come like right to the end too. Hmm. Interesting. I think I found the issue, clutch cable was pulled 
just slightly out of that bracket. So now that everything's in place, this should go right up against the clutch discs. That'll tell me if I screwed something up or not. All right, yeah, that's more like it. Right up against the clutch disc. Pressure plate here. And the retaining plate. A little thread locker, a little high strength. Again, like I said, not an area I mind. We get this together and I believe this one has a range also. By the way, this was 70. The range was 70 to 80 and I, I chose 70 with the red Loctite. I'm comfortable with that. I'm pretty sure that that's the same that I do for the Fat Boy. Uh, it's a slightly different setup because it has the BDL enclosed belt drive, which is uh, the solution to this should it continue to leak and I'm verifying that it's from the primary so so torque wrench I have it at 70 80 90 100 110 20 30 40 150 this torque wrench is in 10 foot pound increments every rotation my 3 8 one is five foot pounds every rotation. So it's just my way of doing it. I just count how many turns and I know that I'm sitting at, you know, whatever it might be. Okay, now it's gonna start to turn. Uh, of course, let's try that again. So we'll get it in here, turn it until the wheel is essentially up against the swing arm all right let's go hey, you know this clutch is actually holding pretty good All right, 150 foot pounds, 70 foot pounds, and that's well, together. Cole, pull this out of here. All right, let me just check the torque spec on these, and I think we're just about ready to pop the cover on. In your typical Harley fashion, 6.5 to 8 foot-pounds. So that's 6.5. And let's see how they feel. That's oh, already there. That was just me snugging it. You know what? 6.5 to 8, huh? 7? Lucky number seven. There's seven. There's seven. Let's see what these two are. It's already there. Okay. Cool, that's it. We'll just give this a quick wipe. We're getting very close. This is exciting. It's heading towards that finish line. I'm not going to forget this thrust washer. I'm assuming it's a thrust washer. And nice and nice, a new gasket, Kometic. So I'm using a mix, right? I mentioned James gaskets, genuine James. And in this case, I'm doing Kometic because I just, I think it's nicer you know, coated steel. I'm very confident. And here we have the nice cruddy, but relatively clean primary cover. So we get this thing on like that. And I will be 
thrilled if I can get one bolt in to hold this in place before fitting the rest of them. I'm sitting here trying to remind myself, okay, don't forget it's in fifth gear. Don't forget fluid. Don't forget <clears throat> battery's not connected. These aren't tight. Just kind of going in my head through the, the remaining things, you know, making kind of a, a mental list. I had to put the floorboard back on, put the shifters on. I'll put the shifters on after the floorboard though, so I can line them up the way I want. I think that makes the most sense. Uh, what else? What else do we got? That's it. That's, I, I mean, I think that's pretty much it. The chain's adjusted. Really only one place to put it. I, I tried moving that around. It's got teeth, so you can only move it like one notch at a time. And it wouldn't go one more notch tighter. And one notch looser, and the chain was practically falling off. So that's the only thing that makes sense. And then, and it feels good. It feels all right to me. Oh boy. This has been an adventure so far and a lot more to go, but hopefully the rest of it's in a good way. I'm really looking forward to, well, looking forward to no more problems with what I've done so far. Fully expect to maybe have to do the top end. Uh, in fact, I, well, we'll see how the winter goes. I don't know. Top ends on these things are easy. They're actually kind of fun to do. And if you do the top end, you now have the confidence that the rings are fresh, the base gaskets are fresh, the head gaskets are fresh. You know, it's, it's just one potential concern, one area for problems that you don't have to worry about. You know, for a while. But being a little unknown, I don't know. I don't want to do work for no reason. I guess once this thing is more roadworthy, since the original owner did mention something about base gaskets, I'll give it a good cleaning and keep an eye on it. That makes some sense. I want to clean those hoses on the other side too. That I don't trust. All the oil hoses. I don't know if anyone makes a kit. If no one does, they should. Because you know, these bikes are coming up in age. Even if this bike was not sitting for 20 years, it's still 40 years old. And, you know, rubber has a, a finite, finite uh, lifespan. So that's something that I think probably should be addressed. But we'll see. That's for later. For now, this is what's important. Torque spec for these, according to the service manual, seven to nine foot pounds. So we're gonna do seven, because I don't wanna strip any of them. Kinda go a little cross pattern. Not certain if that's important, but anytime you can do it, you're probably better off doing it. I mean, this is easy enough, right? All the bolts are here. Let's see, this one's a little bit awkward to see, but yeah, I'm happy with seven. You know what? If it sweats, the upside is that these bolts are easily accessible. So I would much rather have to snug them up after a little bit than to strip one out right now. Somebody needs to explain this to me. The derby covers on a lot of the bikes I've worked on have been gaskets, right? And that's cool and all, but they used to be an O-ring. Why is it not an O-ring anymore? I mean, O-rings make so much more sense in this situation, round cover, needs to be removed for clutch adjustments and all that stuff. Like, it's brilliant. Why don't you just continue to use it? I don't know. Pop the quart of Mobile One 2050 in. So that should be fine. 
we'll get this cover on and get the electrical done. Seriously, Harley, you can't just use O-rings. <sighs> Too much sense. Derby cover on. Here's another example of why I ended up buying more than one kit for gaskets. In the Kometic kit for the inspection cover gasket, and it's a nice gasket. Looks similar to the uh, primary gasket, metal coated, but doesn't fit. The James gasket kit came with the correct one. So that's what we're going with, and that's why I ended up with a mix of brands and multiple kits. That said, they're relatively inexpensive, and you know what? I now have extras of certain things, so should I have to go back in at a later date for some reason? Who knows? I might already have the gasket that I need. As an example, I have the James primary gasket. So if I got to pull this off again, I have a gasket already for it. Uh, kind of wonder if the Kometic one will be reusable though. Coated, eh, I guess you'd have to see how much of the coating transferred. And also, while I'm saying all this, I started off with gaskets kits are cheap, right? And then I start talking about, I wonder if you could reuse it. But if they're cheap, why on earth would you reuse it? I mean, in a pinch. Yeah, I get it. But <laughs> yeah, sometimes I answer my own questions just from talking. So I don't know what the torque spec on these are, but they're the same size as these. So I'm going to go with these same seven foot pounds. So I snugged up these wires. It's kind of a awkward thing to film, I think. It didn't make much sense. But a uh, word of advice is to brace the wire and the nut behind it on the solenoid when you're going to tighten it down so you don't twist everything, break something inside. That's, I know I get it, probably common knowledge, but I figure it doesn't hurt to repeat it. And sometimes, like I said earlier, I say it to remind myself. Oh, yeah. One last bolt. Oh, I'm scared to say this. One last bolt, and then I gotta connect the battery. Coming up on that moment of truth. Oh, well, maybe not really. The real moment of truth is gonna be taking this thing on the road and seeing if it leaks. But just seeing if it fires and doesn't leak here, I mean, that's a big win. That means that at least what was done was done correctly. Now, that means I may not have actually fixed the leak. It's a different story, but yeah, this is, this is it. Oh, look at this. I don't even have to take the side cover off. I only disconnected the positive right here. Should probably crank it over first. I think that'll be the plan is to spin this thing over Make sure everything's turning, no weird, abnormal noises. And uh, also put a pan under it because it's been sitting. So is it going to spit? Eh, probably. It's done that every other time. It's sat. See, this is what I mean. I'm anxious. Huh. <sighs> What did I do wrong? What did I do wrong? Did I actually disconnect the negative? No. That's not disconnected. Hmm. Very interesting. You know what? I'm gonna disconnect this though, because if there's a wire that I didn't connect somewhere, I don't know where it is and I don't want it sparking. Let's see, wires are connected. Everything seems to be 
Yeah. Well, that explains it. Yeah, that definitely was an easy fix. Because <laughs> that would have sucked. <clears throat> uh, I got to grab that somehow. I tend to just, if I can, so I'm not trying to gorilla anything. So I try to just grab the wire and support it in the direction that I'm trying to go in. There you go. Let's see. Fingers crossed. Nah, this gotta be it. I'm not even gonna say fingers crossed because that must be the wire that goes up front to the neck and powers the bike, feeds, feeds the circuit breakers, feeds the ignition switch. It's the only thing that makes any sense. It's, it's not like the bike turned on just and then didn't crank. The bike did not even turn on. So assuming I didn't break anything here, we're about to find out. So one, two, This thing should crank. Come on, please crank. <laughs> this, uh, I guess not please crank, please light up. There we go. Now please crank. That was a spark. I'll have to keep an eye on that. Kitchen pan underneath. Fuel on, running through the filter, all right. Here's the sort of moment. Let's pull the enrichner. And wish me luck. Okay. bad. Not bad at all. Whew. All right. I'm going to let it get a little warm, smoke up a little bit, pump out any of the oil that it's sumped, which it's doing right now. Yeah. As long as it's doing that where I expect I'm okay with it. If it was doing that on this side, where I don't want it leaking, that'd be a problem. I'll tell you this super trap, it's quiet, but it still has a nice sound to it. You can still hear it, that, that nice low Evo idle. Last step in this project, aside from road test and verifying that leaks are fixed, no new leaks were created, let's put the Shifters back on. This one had a, a spacer. I don't know why. It seems silly, but who am I to judge? So the spacer goes in first, and then, huh, good question. Uh, I think they go this way, which means the forward one, or the, the toe shifter, the toe shifter goes first. And these things didn't, yeah, they're not gonna slide just on and off. But I wanna adjust them a certain way. So what I wanna do, let's see if I can do this. I wanna get it in first. All right, it's in first. These transmissions, one of the things I like about them is after you're in first or in fifth, you can go to freely kick them and you, it's like a reminder, like, oh, huh, I'm in first gear or I'm in fifth gear. And I find myself kicking for a sixth a lot. But what I want to do is I want to align this shifter so that it's more or less like here 
ish but but when this is down all right so i want to give myself yeah, i don't want it too high i think that looks about right and of course like i said this is not exactly sliding on and off but it's okay because this is not a show bike so i'm just gonna knock it in all right well i gotta go a little bit more but so there's the toe shifter and that's enough room to to get your foot under it if you need to oh yeah so i can do that if i need to yeah yeah i think that's perfect i'm gonna do the same after i pop this bolt in with the bolt in just to keep it from coming out moving because that's in place and it's i like the position now i'm gonna line the heel shifter and again I want it to where it's as low as possible. This is just me, personal preference. I want it to maybe there, right? To maybe here, but while the shifter is in the rearward position. So, what does that mean? That means, it means about, about here. So, trust the hammer again keep this in place just to get it onto the splines and make sure it's doing what I want so that's that yeah I think that's good I think that suits my I wouldn't say riding style but my preferences um, you know nice thing about not having a show bike um you can just hammer on things and if anything it adds to it maybe i don't know maybe that's just me trying to justify that i was beating on the shifter <laughs> i don't know but i do like having something that i'm not saying you don't worry about but cosmetically a new scratch or a new scuff not a big deal in fact on this bike probably a new side swipe and not a big deal <laughs> sometimes you just can't make it up so i was talking about how i bought multiple gasket kits so multiples of different gaskets right except not for the inspection cover and of course the inspection cover is leaking now it's a leak i didn't have before so i gotta take care of this i don't have that second new gasket it's later in the day and i don't want to go run and get a gasket so i've got one kind of clutch thing to do and that's i didn't throw out the gasket that i took off so we're gonna put this on and see it didn't leak when it came off we'll see if it leaks now the upside is it started leaking like almost right away so if this fixes it it should show itself almost right away meaning if it's leaking it should show itself if it's not leaking it should not leak itself pretty much right away so this should be a either quick fix and diagnosis or a delay for another day we'll see because i really want to go for a ride this will be the first ride with the new controls first ride uh new throttle cables first ride with mirrors well, that's a big one so it might not be a long enough ride to test the uh primary for a leak although maybe too much traffic this late in the day but a ride is a ride and I'll take that over a leaking 
primary inspection cover. Normally, I, I say I like to go to the lower end of the spec, but I don't trust this, and I really want this to not leak. So eight foot-pounds, the higher end of the spec it is. <sighs> Get it warmed up. See if it leaks. Like I said, if it starts leaking, it'll probably be pretty quick. So if this doesn't transition into me red getting ready to go for a ride, then the leak is still there. If this transitions into me on the bike and we get moving, it's fixed. Fingers crossed. Well, I think you all know what this means. That old gasket didn't leak, but the new one did. So go figure. Well, like I said, it's a gorgeous day. So let's enjoy a little ride through the neighborhood. I don't know that this is gonna tell me whether the primary is still leaking out the final drive, but it's still going for a ride. So I'm happy with that. Ah, all right, this feels good. She seems to be nice. The clutch is working good. I mean, I expected it. I didn't really change anything. Uh, the big thing is, was just to try to stop it from leaking. The cool part is to have mirrors and these fresh new controls. Oh, what the hell? Idle's still a little low. Maybe that's that. Running good, running good. She keeps running better and better, to be honest. It's like every time I take it out, I'm really looking forward to using this thing like on a more consistent basis. Front brakes feel good. I, I bled them, new master cylinder. I just love the feel of the buttons and the performance machine grips and everything. I just, it just, it feels nice to the touch, you know. That's something I give Harley a lot of credit for. Not just Harley, other manufacturers do good things. Ducati has a really nice feel to things. Triumph actually uh, makes really high quality stuff. But Harley, Harley's got it down with the fit and finish on the newer bikes, even though I don't care as much for them. But the things I touch, yeah, this is, this is cool. I still didn't do that module. So I still have no turn signals other than to do it myself but that's fine we'll get to that point third gear <laughs> I don't know third base so yeah that'll be the true test this is just to make sure everything's working good but the true test is going to be when I get it on the highway and uh, let's see how that goes. I have faith. I have faith. I still think there's one or two things to look at. Um, I was reading in the comments uh, a few things to check, which if it doesn't leak, I'm going to be like, all right, we'll leave it at that. But uh, if it leaks, at least I know there's still directions on where to go <laughs> she pulls nice he definitely pulls nice makeshift turn signals a little difficult to do when you're uh also trying to pull the clutch in. I guess right turns would be easier. Oh, you know what? I'm gonna put my fog lights on. There you go, real classic, old school. Let's do another 
left, but this time I can actually do the left because I don't have to slow down. Well, I'll slow down too much. I want it to be louder you know it has such a nice sound to it and it's kind of nostalgic to me that it has that super trap um, I don't know that that's something that people use too much anymore I remember it back in the day so it's kind of like cool to have that two into one header with the super trap but also, it doesn't have that, like the fat boy with the drag, uh, drag pipes. I don't know. Actually, like I said, sometimes talking to myself, I answer my own questions. So, if I have two Evos, and one has drag pipes, and one has the Super Trap, I kind of have the best of both worlds. When I want to ride something that's a little quieter, I can ride this. When I want to make noise, well, not at the moment, but when I want to make noise, there's the fat boy. I think that makes the most sense. Yeah. I like that idea. I found that the front fender tip light doesn't work. And so I started taking it apart. And I'm gonna... And I'm like, oh, it's gotta be a bad bulb. Probably a bad bulb. And... Then I'm like, maybe it's a socket, I'm checking this, I'm checking that, and... No, when I was redoing the top end here and redoing the lights, somewhere in there, the wire was running through. I'm not 100% sure where the wire was, but I cut it. The upside is I found it, it's right in here. But, yeah. So, one more thing to add to the list. it that cough might just be an accelerator pump adjustment I had a similar thing happen to me on the fat boy <laughs> I haven't really played around with it on this this bike you know barely did some uh, some carburetor adjustments mostly just the idle mixture and stuff and I gave it a baseline setting for the uh, for the accelerator pump so there is that chance. There's a chance that it's just that. We shall see. The next transition should be a nice morning ride to the highway and the true moment of truth, the final moment of truth, what we've been waiting for. <laughs> Definitely what I've been waiting for and praying for and hoping for. So, let's see if we made this progress. Uh, we'll do that now. <sighs> Short ride, but I noticed a little bit of oil already. You son of a... <laughs> 